Who's responsible for keeping the group alive in Mythic Dungeons? Is it the DPS, the tank, or the healer? Most people would probably answer the healer or even the tank, but this mentality leads to some big problems, especially if you're trying to push higher keys. Here's what usually happens. Players will breeze through Keystone Hero thinking to themselves, hey, I do big damage and know every dungeon mechanic, so I must be ready for high keys. Unfortunately, there is one crucial concept that Keystone Hero fails to teach. In fact, this gap of knowledge is a massive brick wall that prevents many capable players from pushing the highest keys. And today, we will explain that a simple change in mindset is all it takes to break this barrier. But first, for those of you that don't know, for over a decade, we here at Skullcaps have been working with the absolute best players in all of WoW including world champions and those who have been at the top of the game for multiple expansions. During that time, we've produced thousands of epic guides and helped over half a million players just like you achieve their goals in WoW PvP. And starting today, we'll be doing the same in PvE, teaching you how to improve as a player and hit your personal goals. In order to bring you guides just like this one, we spent the last few weeks working with some of the best MDI players on Earth from Echo and Method to learn what it truly takes to push yourself in Mythic Plus. Stay tuned because today we'll explain how a few simple adjustments is all it takes to break the rating barriers in Mythic Plus. When we spoke to MDI teams from Echo and Method, there was one clear message. If you want to push high keys, it is everyone's shared responsibility to keep the group alive. The silent killer in high Mythic keys is DPS treating survivability as a healer only problem, when instead everyone should be willing to sacrifice a bit of damage to help out the group. Of course, we all want our name to be on top of details. Maybe because of ego or pride, but sometimes it's okay to set the meters aside, if it means preventing lethal damage. We don't want to suggest that DPS doesn't matter. It most certainly does, but more often than not, being able to avoid damage is equally as important. So for the second section of this video, we will explain what this implies for the group as a whole, whether you play DPS, tank, or healer. Focusing on a few core mechanics including cooldown management, interrupts, and utility, and how to build game knowledge to make better decisions for your team. We will start by talking about cooldown management, because this is arguably the biggest execution test in high keys. There is a tendency to think of dungeons as a linear path, where the goal is to advance as quickly as possible from one pack to the next and from boss to boss. But along this path, there is cadence, where specific mobs and boss mechanics create pressure points that need to be powered through with cooldowns, interrupts, and utility. The higher the key, the more extreme this cadence becomes. If a DPS pops every offensive on cooldown, they might be topping the meters, but at the same time will be making the run harder, since their cooldown windows won't always line up with the toughest moments of the run. While there is an explicit goal of finishing the dungeon fast, there is an implicit goal of being efficient in order to power through pressure points. In order to be as efficient as possible, we need to pre-plan our cooldowns in order to power through the toughest moments of the run, and then find clever ways to navigate other pressure points when cooldowns are more limited. The first pressure point of any run is almost always the initial pull of each dungeon, which is where everyone can afford to be aggressive, since every player will have all of their cooldowns. Here we don't have to put much thought into using our CDs since we know that this is a pressure point. But once this initial pull is over, there will be some downtime, where our goal is to plan around the next pressure point. When planning routes and timing pulls, we need to keep in mind that cooldowns won't be available for every pack or even every mob. In lower keys, this concept is far less important since packs die much faster, which means the pressure points are less extreme and cooldowns aren't necessarily needed for these smaller peaks. But in higher keys, because the pressure points are more deadly, we're forced to think more about our team's cooldown budget. Here at the end of Naltharian's Lair, we have to fight two moderately difficult mobs and then immediately transition to the boss. To handle this efficiently, we need to think of our cooldown cadence, using them on the Dominator while CCing the Trapper. That way, we can power through a difficult mob with our CDs, then have a slightly easier mob that we can micro CC, which then allows our cooldowns to be ready again during the boss. Sometimes, these pressure points happen mid-boss fight, and offensives need to be saved to push through them and avoid unhealable damage. The last boss in Brackenhide Hollow is a perfect example. Here, we have a DPS check, but it's not on the boss itself. Instead, it's on the Rotvers totems, that will spawn periodically throughout the fight. DPS need to be willing to save their offensives in order to kill each totem quickly, which obviously means sacrificing some damage on the boss itself. The success on this boss fight is determined by the DPS player's willingness to grief themselves on scoreboard damage for the sake of keeping the group alive. In higher keys, tracking party cooldowns is vital no matter your role. 
Tanks need to be aware of what offensives their teammates have in order to know how aggressive they can be with pulls. Healers need to be tracking their team's personal defensives so they can be prepared to use their healing cooldowns if needed. DPS need to know all of this information too, recognizing when their tank or healer is out of cooldown so that they can adjust accordingly. If you aren't using Omni CD already, we highly recommend installing it as soon as possible. Cooldown management is one of the first places where players can start adjusting their single player mindset, and by tracking everyone's CDs, it becomes more apparent when you need to step up and play for your team. We're not done though. Interrupts and utilities are next up on our list when it comes to improving group play. Let's go over kicking first. Becoming better at interrupts involves two separate skill sets. The first is knowing what to kick, which is a test of game knowledge, and the second is knowing how or when to kick, which is a test of mechanics. To start, we need to know what is worth kicking, because some casts are lethal. Take for instance the Geomancers in Ultimon. These mobs cast Chain Lightning, which in combination with Rot Damage is enough to cause some quick deaths. In Altharis, there are these Thaumaturge mobs which cast a spell called Molten Core, and if it goes through, you can almost guarantee a wipe soon after. In both of these cases, group members should be willing to sacrifice a small amount of damage, repositioning or stopping a cast if needed in order to land interrupts. Once again, keeping the group alive is always going to be more valuable than doing slightly higher DPS. You can count on every dungeon having casts that need to be interrupted no matter what, which is why in higher keys it becomes extremely helpful to assign kicks to individual players. This can be done automatically with marker assignments, but should also be managed with effective communication and voice chat. It should be clearly communicated who is kicking what and it is up to players to recognize the individual responsibility that they have. There is some logic in how to assign interrupts efficiently though. Since melee kicks have shorter cooldowns and are often limited by range, it is better to assign mobs with smaller, more frequent casts. Range, on the other hand, need to be ready to interrupt any cast that might be harder to deal with as melee. Take for instance the Feral Bloodstormer mobs in the Underrot. Because these mobs fixate on players, they will be moving constantly, and if melee becomes fixated, then it becomes the ranged DPS who needs to interrupt the Sonic Screech. Now as far as kicking mechanics are concerned, we should remember that every interrupt is off the global cooldown and includes a built-in stop casting command, making the act of landing kicks very manageable, no matter what your role. Of course, fast casts will always be difficult to interrupt, not because of the GCD, but because of human reaction time, which visually is around 200 to 300 milliseconds. Auditory reaction speed is slightly better on average, making audio cues important for landing interrupts. For the fastest cast, it can be worth actually holding your GCD in order to make the interrupt more guaranteed. Take for instance the Dark Echoes cast from the Grotesque Horrors in the Underrod. If allowed to go through in higher keys, it is almost a guaranteed wipe, but with a sub 1 second cast time, it requires very fast reaction speed to kick. Because of this, players should consider sacrificing a small amount of damage and potentially holding their GCD in order to make interrupts more reliable. Utility works hand in hand with interrupts, and is equally as important for preventing unhealable damage. The Gust Soldiers in Vortex Pinnacle have a cast called Rushing Winds and are paired with wild Vortex mobs that cast Cyclone. Both are vital to interrupt, but because so many casts are going off all at once, it's important that we look for other ways to pseudo-interrupt, like relying on stuns or other forms of micro CC. The start of Brackenhide Hollow includes some very difficult packs. During these pulls, the Bracken War Scourge will periodically enrage with Rage Storm, causing massive AoE damage. The moment this happens, players should be instantly ready with any Enrage Dispel mechanic, like Shiv, Tranquilizing Shot, or Soothe. These globals, despite being DPS losses, are always worth the trade since the AoE damage is lethal. While this is happening, the Claw Fighters will be fixating on random players, dealing huge single target damage which can be CC'd to stop the channel, causing them to go back to the tank. And let's not forget the Archers, who will stand further away and either need to be knocked into the pack or lured with LOS. This is a very intense pull and requires a huge emphasis on multitasking and utility. If you are unwilling to sacrifice a bit of damage and hold globals to counter these mechanics, you are going to have a bad time. Just to recap, cooldown management, interrupts, and utility are all important for playing as a team, but at their core is one concept vital for truly breaking out of single player mode. It's game knowledge. In order to start pushing higher keys, this cannot be overlooked. When most people think about game knowledge from Mythic Plus, they're usually thinking about the knowledge of each individual dungeon, like knowing different routes and memorizing mob and boss mechanics. This is all valuable information, but we can do better. What players tend to overlook is knowledge about other classes that they don't play. With soon to be 39 playable specs in World of Warcraft, there is a clear reason why people wouldn't want to learn everything about other classes. There's just way too much information to memorize, 
But the truth is you don't have to memorize everything. Instead, we can be selective. Let's go back to our core pillars, cooldowns, utility, and interrupts. Our goal is to have basic knowledge of all of these categories for every class, even the ones we don't play. To highlight a practical example, let's think of everyone's favorite cooldown, power infusion. There are always good targets to PI, but at the same time, there is always a best target. If you play Priest and don't know how strong PI can be for Devastation Evoker, Balanced Druid, or Enhancement Shaman, you could be missing out on a substantial amount of damage if you are constantly PIing someone else. On top of this, if you don't know the cooldowns of other classes, you could easily press PI outside of its optimal windows. This is why we highly recommend tracking party CDs with a cooldown like Omni CD, and then memorizing each icon for every class. That way, when you see Incarnation pop up on your frame, you instantly know it's probably a good time to press Power Infusion. One of the best ways to learn about other classes is to actually play other classes, or even better, to play other roles. If you play DPS or tank, it might be useful playing a healer as an alt so you can understand the game from the healer perspective and vice versa. For instance, playing a preservation evoker might help you learn how to position when playing with healers that have very specific positional limitations. This knowledge can then translate into making better decisions when you are grouped with holy paladins or rest of shamans on your main. Of course, it's completely fine to specialize, which most people wind up doing, but even within your role you can learn a lot by just playing other classes. And even if you think you know everything about your main, there is always the possibility of doing more. As we've mentioned throughout this guide, pushing higher keys means putting a greater emphasis on being able to avoid damage. Because of this, you might need to make talent adjustments, being willing to sacrifice small amounts of damage for more survivability. Regardless of how much knowledge you are willing to learn, if you can manage to learn together with the same group of people, it will be way more efficient than constantly pugging and playing the game solo. There are a few reasons for this. For one, if you don't play a meta spec, it might be harder to find groups in the first place. If you play Feral Druid, we're not saying you have to reroll, but it's important to recognize that as a solo player, group leaders are more likely to view you as a liability if you are an off meta spec. Finding reliable groups can not only help avoid any class tuning based issues, but also helps build group synergy. The more you play with the same players, the more you are able to understand their strengths and more importantly their limitations. It's possible to push keys entirely through pugging, but the experience is going to be far more volatile. If you can manage to consistently group with the same players, especially with the same tank or healer, then you're going to have a much easier and more meaningful experience. Finally, if you just want to see consistent improvement, just spam keys. At the end of the day, mythics are like memorizing one long dance, combining a bunch of repeatable patterns into one cohesive experience. Even if you aren't the best dancer at the start, you will eventually improve with repetition alone, as you get better and more confident at mastering each step within the dungeon. Oh, left, left, left! Let's go! There's a tendency for players to feel unmotivated while looking at their rating, thinking to themselves that they've hit their limit, even early into a season. They might check the leaderboards and see scores far and beyond what is considered possible for the average player, and it doesn't help that sometimes the players on the leaderboards make things look easy when tuning into their Twitch streams. But at the end of the day, these are professional players, many of which have been playing with the same team for thousands of dungeons. It's like comparing yourself to the strongest person at the gym. You might be on day 50, but they could be on day 5000. But unlike our bodies which can lose muscle over time, our mythic score can only go up. So you might as well get in the reps every week, or ideally every day so that piece by piece you can get better at every part of the dance. Before we wrap things up, we want to hear from you. We're currently working alongside some of the best players in the world to develop high quality guides for Mythic Plus. With that in mind, what topics would you like us to cover next? Do you have any specific pain points you would like help with? Let us know in the comments below. And if you like this video and want to see more, be sure to subscribe. As always though, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.